As a JavaScript developer, you are told to avoid global variables. But in order to do that, you need to know how. Sometimes it seems like you need to use a global variable and able to accomplish what you need to do. Well, in this video, we are going to look at three techniques for avoiding the use of global variables using the concept of closure. Now, in a previous video, we talked about why global variables were dangerous. And you can refer to that video if you'd like to review that information. Now, before we start looking at some code, let's take a look at the three techniques we are going to use. First, we're going to use closure to avoid globals. And the, the first technique is simply placing the code within a function. So what does the concept closure mean? Well, basically it means that functions will remember everything that was defined in the same scope as the function itself was defined. So when people create global variables, it's because they know they need access to that information later on. Well, if you create a function and in the same scope, meaning inside a function, you also include other variables and things that that function needs access to, that uses closure and that avoids placing them in the global environment. So we'll take a look at that first example that eases us into this concept. Second, we will use an immediately invoked function expression. And third, we'll use a single global object. So there are times where you need something declared in the global space. For the third example, we'll look at how to do that while still avoiding multiple global variables. All right, now here is the example that I'm going to be using to describe these three techniques. This is a simple web page I've created that just captures a couple events. It captures key events. When I press a key, it records the key code and records what letter and so on. It also ca captures mouse move events, but it only does it every half second. All right, that's what I'm going to be using for the example to explain these techniques. I won't go into a lot of detail about the particular code of this event reporter, you will see it, but I won't spend a lot of time describing it. So I'm going to open up Sublime. So first, here's the HTML page of that event reporter. Here's the JavaScript that is attached to it. So basically, as you can see, I'm creating a lot of variables. I need those variables in order to do some of the things that I intend to do. Um, I simply create some listeners and I have them call this load info function to report the information to the page. I also added the capability when I was checking key events, I added the capability to be able to press a control S, that's what this if statement does, to remove the listeners so that then I could examine the events without it continually adding new information. It simply does that by calling a toggle event listener function down here that checks to see if they're already enabled. If they are, it removes them by calling another function. If not, it adds them. When this particular JavaScript page loads, I call toggle event listeners. And since they're not enabled yet, it adds the listeners and it begins recording the event information. All right, so this is how this event recorder is currently implemented. Now, if I open up the console, there's going to be a lot of globals. For example, content. That's one variable I declare. Print it is another one. And it's set to true right now. There's also multiple functions which I could access that are declared on the global scope. For example, load info. As we can see, there's that function. And add listeners. That function is declared as well. So a lot of things declared on the global level, and we want to change that. So a simple way is just enclose all of this in a function. And this function could be simply an initialize function for the page. So if I just do something like this, 
I'm going to call it init and I'll close the function. Now I simply need to call that function to set things up. I'm going to add an event listener to do that to the window object. So when it loads, whoops, I will simply call init. And so this function, this init function will execute all the variables and the functions are now defined inside of this function. Therefore, that's their scope. Their scope is no longer global. So let me save this and we'll go ahead and take a look at this again. Refresh it. We can see the event reporter is still working. Now let's take a look at the console. Some of those same globals we were looking at before. Listener enabled. That is not defined. Load info. See if that function is still defined. That is not defined either. The scope of it is inside that function, so that's where it is accessible. It's no longer on the global level. However, everything is still working as I need it to work. Now there is one thing that is still defined on the global level and that's our init function. See, we can still see that. Well, if we wanted to eliminate that as well, we can do that with an immediately invoked function expression. Now this particular application is a great candidate for that because this is usually used if you need to do a lot of setup at the beginning of your program and then you don't need that function anymore. We really don't need the init function after it executes once. Once it initializes everything, we're done with it. And so that's why it's a great candidate for this particular pattern. So let's take a look at how we would change this to make that happen. First off, we're going to make this function anonymous. So it will not have a name. Then we're going to, after we end the function, we're going to enter parentheses. These parentheses tell JavaScript to execute it. So it is immediately defined and then it is executed right away. And because it's executing right away, we no longer need this. We don't need to call it. Now there's still one last thing we need to change. Because this starts with the keyword function, JavaScript thinks that we are writing a function declaration and it's not going to see a name and so it's going to tell us there's a problem. Well, we can avoid that by enclosing the whole thing inside of parentheses. Such as that. You can see in Sublime that the little errors that were showing up have gone away. So now if I save this, refresh this page, our event reporter is still working. If I go to the console, the same variables are still not on the global space, but also what about the init function? Is that there? and it's not there anymore as well. So we've even eliminated that. Now that's called an immediately invo invoked function expression. Now there are times where you need to make certain functions accessible from the outside. Right now if I wanted to call load info for example, I couldn't do it. It's not accessible to me. If I needed to call it from another script, I would not be able to do it. So there are times where you need to make those accessible. And we do that by first creating a global object and then everything we want to be accessible is attached to that global object. So the structure for this is a bit different. So I'm going to open up a different JavaScript file where I've already defined that. So here is the code. So what I've done here is I have just defined an object on the global space. And this is the object I'll use to access 
these methods that I want to make available other places. Now, the only way I would run into problems is if I were including code that also used this exact same reference for something, event app. Now, there are ways around that, but we won't get into that in this particular video. So I feel pretty safe that I can define this globally. So I set that equal to an immediately invoked function expression. Now these parentheses, because I'm setting the results of this to this variable, these parentheses here are not necessary. But they make it more readable so that somebody can see that, oh, hey, this, is, uh, this function is being invoked right away. Okay. Now, then inside the function, these items here, the variables and this particular function, I have defined as private, meaning they will not be accessible from anywhere else. However, those that I want accessible, I define this way. I return an object. Here's the end of that object down here. And inside of that object is where I have properties or methods that I want to be accessible. For example, add listeners. I've defined that function. That's the first item in the object. Second item, second method is remove listeners. Third method is toggle event listeners. So those get returned, because this function executes immediately, those get returned and placed into this variable. Then I can use that variable to access those methods. And I can access them from anywhere, because this is global. But allows me to only define one global variable as opposed to multiple. So let me change this to app2, save it refresh and sure enough things are still working and now if I go to console and I want to access one of those methods I can do that by typing in event app remove listeners I can execute that come back out to my page and the listeners are no longer working But I also made add listeners available from the global space as well. So I can immediately start them working again. Okay. And finally, I still cannot access load info. It's telling me it's undefined. And that's because I did not make that public. These two methods can access it because of closure. They see everything that was defined inside the function they were defined in. They can still see it. I can't from outside of that. Therefore, it becomes private. And the only methods that can access it are remove listeners and add listeners. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you were able to see how you can avoid creating global variables using whichever technique you feel comfortable with. I also hope that this shed some light on the concept of closures as well, as that's an important concept in order to understand how this works. If you found this helpful, like the video, forward it to someone else who might find it useful, and subscribe to our channel. Good luck in your future JavaScript projects.